these eggs bear an ingenious design strategy. Hey guys, I'm Chris Ignato, and today I have an awesome species to tell you about. It is the Anam walking stick, also known as the Vietnamese stick insect. Let's get started. This is the Vietnamese or Anam walking stick. Now, it's pretty easy to tell if you have a male or female, and let me explain how. Of course, you can't exactly look up their skirts for obvious reasons. They'll press charges. But the trick is, if you find one of these, it's just about guaranteed to be a female. Males are fairly rare among these insects. In fact, they tend to reproduce through parthenogenesis, which is a form of asexual reproduction. Where's the fun in that? I don't know. They do this by simply dropping eggs throughout their activities that haven't been fertilized by a male. The eggs develop and basically grow into genetic clones of their mother. There's probably not a lot of genetic diversity going on there. I'm not sure why they reproduce this way, and I imagine mating probably also has its costs. Maybe it's difficult to find each other due to their amazing camouflage. Maybe pheromones would betray their presence to potential predators. I don't know but it seems that parthenogenesis seems the most effective and safest way for them to reproduce. Their eggs will hatch in a couple of months, and there's usually a lot of them because, well, they don't need males to fertilize them. Their average lifespan is about five to seven months. These insects are vegetarians, and they'll feed on different leafy greens such as oaks, maples, roses, and many other species of vegetation. They rely on their amazing camouflage to evade detection by predators, which would include birds, spiders, all sorts of rodents, reptiles, and other things. They are perfectly geared to resemble a twig and have even adapted to sway back and forth to look like a twig moving in the breeze. Another form of defense is the design of their legs. They're covered with many spines kind of resembling the teeth of a saw. If need be, they just swipe those legs at a predator, and they also make it a little difficult to swallow them. They have little claws on their feet to help them climb, but let me tell you, they're really good at climbing up glass surfaces too. Take a look at that face. Doesn't this remind you of something from a movie? Those mouth parts are designed for munching and chewing on leaves and other vegetation. Now that's a face that only a mother can love, but I actually find them awesome looking. Now have a look at their compound eyes. Get this, as nymphs, they have smaller eyes with less facets and photoreceptors. This allows them to be more diurnal early on, which helps them to leave the leaf litter and head towards the brighter vegetation above for food and cover. As they mature, they grow more facets and photoreceptors and their retinas grow larger. This makes them more sensitive to light radiation and damage. So then, they become nocturnal feeders, which probably affords them more safety from certain predators such as birds. And check out how the base of their antennas look very much like young leaves. Their heads sport horns that, while they might make them look a little menacing, they're actually just there to mimic thorns. Their bodies, of course, identically match leaves and twigs, complete with little tubercles and textures that convincingly look just like bark. Now, on to their incredible eggs. They are really neat looking, really unique. I just love them. Some people say they look a lot like beans, and I can see why, but I personally think they look like pottery complete with covers. They are so cool. See that little plug on the end? That little plug is where the baby emerges. I've seen them just pop open, and a little nymph struggles and climbs out. The nymphs look a lot like little ants, which is good because get ready for the best part. They will often hatch within an ant colony. Those eggs have capitula on them, which is a spitting image of an eliosome. That's a nutrient-rich fatty structure found on some seeds to entice ants to take them into their colony to use as food. Of course, the surviving seeds will germinate in a safe environment away from birds. Well, that capitulum protects the eggs in the same way. Ants remove them from the surface above where they are vulnerable to parasitic wasps. And this capitulum even goes so far as to provide a nutrient-rich treat for the ants, just like that eliosome. That's so cool. 
While some eggs might wind up as food, many still survive. By the time the baby hatches, the nest may even be empty and the ants moved on elsewhere. The nymph just heads on out into the open world unmolested by the ants. Amazing, that is textbook evolutionary convergence among plants and animals. Wow. I really hope you are entertained by this video and learn some really cool things. I want to thank you very much for watching and once again I'm Chris Ignato signing out. Be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button but you got to click the bell icon because if you don't YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember passion inspires spirit.